So we're going to just kind of see what we can come up with here and uh, continue this video. Uh, it sounds like this video might be a couple parts because uh, this is a challenging thing to build. But I think it's worth showing you every step, showing you uh, my failed attempts, which is what I, basically what I've done with digging through all my bearings and finding all my hard drive parts. That is probably going to be a failed attempt. Uh, I want to keep the weight down on the end effector so it can move at whatever rate I want it to move. So in order to do that, i got to simplify my design, which honestly I would go with something like this, but that actually forces me to add a few extra pieces. This is the simplest design, and as long as it does what I want, I'm all good. All right, let's see what I can come up with. All right, so now that we've got the motor all figured out and we've got the gears all figured out, I went into Fusion 360 here, and uh, as you can see, drew up this part. And if I remove the end effector there, you can see I have the motor and the shaft and I have everything positioned where I want it. I just took the bushings out of that uh, black thing it was in and I made my own here. I got to make sure this is perfectly aligned though, so hopefully it prints well. And then, uh, yeah, here's the pieces. This uh, little hole is for a hall sensor for homing. I'm going to glue a magnet on the top of this gear and I'm going to put a hole or a, a, a home switch hall sensor and one of these little guys I'll show it to you closer in a minute and I'm just going to take the hall sensor out and put it right there so that should fit in there nicely and then this gear will be the homing gear and it should do what I want so yeah let's go ahead and print it out and see what happens all right, using our little Ant E-Carry, which, by the way, I use all the time. I love this little thing. I'll leave the links in the description if you uh, go purchase this or anything on GearBust. It'll actually help uh, fund this type of project. So let's see if I can get it off without breaking everything. I had to use support uh, to get everything working correctly. Oh, it is on there, let me tell you. Watch your fingers if you use a razor blade. Like that. Don't put your fingers on the other side. <laughs> wow. Alright, cool. Let's see what it looks like. Alright, don't worry. The crotch shot's not too bad. So here's what the part looks like. I did have some support, but this uh, printer, when you get everything calibrated right, does really well. Uh, the reason I'm not using my other Delta is because the Delta that I built originally doesn't have perfect axis symmetry and so it's really uh, difficult to get that thing exactly where you want it. Um, so I tend on using pieces that I need to be perfect which I printed the uh, end effector on there also to make sure it was also symmetric and proper. So if the Stuff doesn't come off. You can just take a razor blade like that and lightly get it. Now I gotta get in here and get this. Here we go. Alright, so you can see everything pretty well came out flawless. The lighting isn't great in here, but you can see how well that that looks. Uh, turned out really nice. Just a few scraps, not much wasted plastic. So we gotta tap this guy, mount the motor, put the bushings in. Put the gears on. I'm going to temporarily temporarily glue the gear onto the shaft, and if uh, I need to remove it, I can just pop it off. All right. So, like I said, I took uh, took this guy, took the little bushings out of it. If anyone knows where to get bushings like this, please let me know. The reason I really like these is because inside there there is a felt uh, like a felt washer with a spring clip that holds it in there. And the reason I like these so much is that felt inside of there really helps uh, the system you know it helps with uh, the shaft staying in position when it's not perfect so let's see how these guys fit in here that one fits really well really snug no loose looseness there now it popped in nice too now the real question is is when I put the shaft in how does it feel? Because if it uh, if it ain't perfectly straight, it won't work. Oh yeah, look at that. Perfect. Moves in and out just free. Doesn't have any real play in it. Awesome. The gear that I machined, I did not take video of this, but I cut the plastic all the way down, and then uh, 
put a piece of aluminum in there. What I should have done is left some length here and put a set screw on there. Uh, but, you know, live and learn. So I'm actually going to put the gear in there. There we go. And I will pop the clip on there. I put some tape on this clip to hold the or to, to not allow it to scrape. Originally I didn't have any spring tension on here all the time, but right now I do. So the gear I'll put it where I want it and then I'll lightly glue it onto the shaft so that we can do some test runs. I have to obviously replace this too, so. Alright, let's get the rest of it together. Alright boys and girls, so I recorded everything I didn't need and I didn't record anything that I tried to record. So I referenced this little chip and this is a uh, S-A-I-N-S-M-A-R-T board and what I did is I took the hall sensor off and placed it within the uh, end of that thing and then put some jumpers on the law, you know, the end of this guy and uh, now it's, I'm using it as, a, uh, as an end stop but I'm using the hall sensor remotely with just wires to save space on the actual unit itself and uh, anyway yeah that actually happened I had my camera rolling and I must have stopped it and then I didn't look at it for the whole next giant session of recording which was all the details of this thing and uh, unfortunately that's what we get to live with but yes I did take the hall sensor off put wires on it made sure it was all correct hooked it back up to this and added a magnet on the little uh, motor gear and yeah dang it gotta look at my camera more often yeah well live and learn let's go on to the next phase alright so after some finagling I got all the wires connected here it's a mess uh, you can see the light on here that's the power light so I'm gonna just spin this by hand and you can see that when it gets to the right position that little light will light up boop there we go so now we've got our home sensor built into this thing. So uh, I adjusted this so that there's basically no uh, no free play between the gears, but this thing still moves nice and free just as expected. And uh, the next step in the process actually is uh, I need to figure out how to get rid of the slop in this motor. That's not much, but it's enough to throw things off. So let's go try to hook this up to the printer just to see if we can get it to do anything and I'll probably run through all the programming and nonsense another day today really it's all about the hardware oh I got it on there it's uh, attached so we can just do some brief testing it must be Halloween or something all that red and black looks pretty good uh, everything is attached and uh, I gotta wire it up still We'll give it uh, some tests. I'll have to set up all the code and get all that figured out, how to add axes and all sorts of fun stuff. So again, this is running off the uh, Duet Wi-Fi. This is actually a version one board. Um, the very first one, whenever they were prototyping. It's not a prototype board, it, it is a board. It is a version one board, but anyway. So let's get this thing wired up. Just see if we can get it spinning, get it doing what we want. Okay, after many days of fiddling, testing, checking, fiddling, upgrading firmware, talking to the guys on the Duet form, I finally got this thing where I can test it and I have definitely some complaints about what I've constructed and how I'm going to have to fix things. However, this is just a proof, kind of just a set it up, will it work this way? So I'll tell you the problems, I'll tell you the successes, and I'll give you some details. So uh, let me show you. All right, so here we are. We have the Duet software uh, web interface in front of us. Uh, I just wanted to show you a few details. Uh, I can go in here and I can open up the uh, config.g, and I'm not going to let you see my passwords. There we go. So this is what the config.g looks like. I basically had to add the U drive in here and tell it uh, about its end stops. I had to add it uh, to all of these other things. My goal is to go through this in another video, so I'm doing it very fast here. But one of the major issues I had is I had to add the end stops. 
down here at the bottom. So the end stops right here. Right now they're set to uh, 10,000. I've probably set it to some extremely large number because right now I'm using a U-axis. I'll change that to V probably here in a little while because that's a common standard for rotational, but I used U for now. So anyway, this is a config file. I will go through all this stuff another day. Uh, I also had to add a home dot or a home u dot g file which homes the u axis individually. All right, again, I'll go through all this in another video, the software side of it, uh, and explain to my issues, problems there. But now, usually you don't have this additional axis, but now I have this additional u axis and I can home it individually now because I have a home stuff on there. Oh, this is an error, so ignore this. This is actually an error for the uh, current updated version I'm using right now. So anyway, I had to upgrade this. Uh, let's see, I had to upgrade this right here to a 2.02 RC2. Uh, and then the uh, web interface is a 1.22.3. So this stuff you guys probably don't care about, but for some of those of you, for some of you, this is important. So anyway, enough about that. Uh, I wanted to show you where I got to go to home this thing and how I control it. I can actually move it here or I can go up here and punch in like here I've got G1 U360 F is the uh, feed rate and I can run it at this speed works really well. Uh, so let me just show you how it homes and a few other things and then we'll talk about the issues I'm having. Uh, I forgot to mention uh, also these all these drives are set up as absolute coordinates which the extruder drives on this machine run at relative. Now you can change that option, but currently that's the way I've got it. And that seems to be uh, okay. All right, so I got the flashlight on the camera. I rarely ever use it. You can actually finally see the gears in there. So if you look here, you can see the, uh, the gears moving in and out inside there. So they slide really nicely. Now if I hold this one and try to move the other one, uh, which you cannot really see. There's really no play between the two. However, there is a whole lot of play in the actual motor drives. This is going to cause me major issues, but we'll talk about that here towards the end. Right now I've got the uh, magnet inside uh, right there, that little silver thing to the right in between the two silver things. That's the, the magnet hitting the hall sensor. That cable comes out of the top here, goes down here, and goes down into where the hall sensor used to be on this um, board that we looked at earlier in the video. Goes down here and plugs into the extruder zero uh, homing position. Now I've got the actual motor on the second extruder position. So the second driver chip here is actually going to the sysflex cable going to the motor. So when I home this thing, which I'll show you now, uh, in the home file, I set it to zero and then I tell it to spin 360 until it finds its position and then it will back off and come back and sit right at zero. So here we go, I'll home it. So that was it. So if I move it outside of its position and then try to home it again, you'll see it will go back and find its zero right there. So if it runs the wrong way, sometimes it's not real happy, but hit it twice and it's okay, you just have to check it. So the homing function seems to work well. Uh, you can see the, where is it, yeah, right there. You could not see it. See the little red light? I hit it again, homing. So it touches it, comes back, and that's how it homes. So the homing works great and that allows the software to accept the commands because if it's not homed, it won't accept the commands. So that part's great and uh, now I'm going to run a, a, a script and show you how I do that real quick. Alright, my good friend Matt has been helping me with this. I cannot do this part. So he's been working on a script to read point to point, rebuild this thing, check the vector direction, and then spit out the proper U command according to the delta. And then we've got some comments over here. It's a, it's a bit, uh, bit much on my head, but if I run this script, this is basically what it spits out. Oh yeah, got so much stuff on there. So this is basically just a simple circle. That's it. So it just spits out the proper command for the U value. So originally the file is just X and Y. And then it recalculates for the direction according to the vector and it spits out the U value. So I'm actually going to try running this exact one. Uh, it's just a simple circle and we'll see how it works.
Okay, so quick reference. The file I just showed you is not the one I'm going to run. I just realized that was for something else, but same same sort of setup there. It's just there's some F commands in there. So I'm going to show you this one. It'll go down. I'm going to try to track it here. It'll spin around, and then it'll start running. So right now I've got all the U commands on the same line. So that means that everything will be executed, and we'll get to the same next point at the same time, including the rotational axis. So that actually is going to cause some serious issues when you're trying to do straight lines. But for this example, we're just doing a circle. So here we go. So it's moving in the same direction because that's the way the script is written. It's going to go down to a zero position. It's going to go down, follow the vector. And then as we circle around, it will do exactly following of the direction of travel the best it can so I have a speed problem right now the little stepper motor can only run so fast so I can't run it as fast as I would like to um, so this works real fluently but the issues are is that when we go to a straight line we're going to have an issue where it's going to want to move the circular axis just like that so that was a straight line and it went from circling to coming back around and that's an issue because we want that to be in the proper direction before we start that travel so the g-code and the script is gonna have to do some other things right now this is just an example of the uh, code that we've got and the fact that it is at least functioning so again I will go over software and all this and another one when we finally get to that point but right now um, you know, the reason I picked this stepper motor is because it's small, compact, and it's got a nice gear ratio. But the gear ratio is somewhere on the order of 100 to 1. And to be honest with you, I can't run this stepper motor any faster than what you just saw right there, or it starts skipping steps or losing torque. So you would think I'd have more torque with this giant step down, and in fact, I do, but I don't have any rotational torque. So the hold torque versus the rotational torque those two are completely different and I'm gonna have a big problem here so I'm gonna have to find me a new stepper motor we successfully rebuilt that one and that was pretty sweet but now we're gonna have to find something different which is okay um, the other problem I'm having is the gear let me see if I can zoom in for you but that gear alright it's hard to see that black isn't it but that gear up there is moving inside of the gear set that's in there and that is causing major problems so this little bit of movement I have here is completely unacceptable for such a tool so I'm gonna have to get me a stepper that probably doesn't have a gearbox that is a little bigger than I want and actually give it some tests and go down that path but for now proof of concept so what I'm gonna do real quick is I'm going to edit the g-code I just ran and I'm going to stick in a single line to where the axis moves before it goes to the next point on that last move so that you can kind of see what that looks like. All right, I've edited the G code. Edited it. I edited it. I edited it. I edited it. I edited it. I, edited. I did some editing on the G code. There we go. That sounds better. And uh, this is what it should really do in, uh, in general sense. So obviously the first thing to do is the home everything and then I go ahead and home the rotational axis which we've got it set up to be facing I believe it is positive X so that that's our reference point at all times so that has to be calibrated and then I'm going to run the G code it's going to basically move into position move all the way down into position once it gets to almost zero it will stop position itself properly then go to zero and then start the circle that I, we've got programmed here. Um, I can speed this thing up. Let's try it and see how she runs. There you go. And then it will come up, and then if it needs to go home or something like that, it will do so. I don't have it to do anything after this. Um, so obviously the tool head I got on there right now isn't the uh, proper tool head. The offset on this guy is not at zero and it should be at zero so it might look a little strange to you um, I'll run that again and this time it's actually running it pretty fast here let's see what happens 
Oh, so that's the other thing. It's absolute, so it has to unwind itself right now, which really this is the reason that we want to home the thing every time. We don't want it to, to do that right there. That is not helpful. But um, anyway, again, this is just sort of proof that it can be done in this fashion, and it does work. So uh, a couple problems real quick to talk about. Uh, first of all, this is a point to point to point. And so, like I said earlier, if it's going to be running and going, uh, you know, into a uh, circle or a square with corner radiuses, we can throw G2 and G3 commands, which is counterclockwise or clockwise arc. And then the you could put all that on the same line in the G code and it would probably be just fine. It would follow that to the next position. Um, so that's a good thing. The, the other thing is, is really to do it point to point like we're doing it, as long as everything is arcs and circles and very tight uh, points, then it should probably be fine. So if we were wanting to do straights and stuff, we would need to put the, uh, the command to turn the head rotational, you know, on its own line, which means it pauses at every single position, which is really not a great thing. Now sometimes you want to pause and turn, and other times you don't want to pause and turn. So we got a lot of a uh, lot of work to do on the script and trying to figure out the best solution for that but ultimately uh, yes it does work now one of the other problems that we're gonna have is because this is absolute if it's not tuned perfectly and I can tell you that this one's not tuned perfectly because of the gear ratio it's very difficult and if it skips a step then it's really out of whack because I'm pushing it too hard uh, and it won't speed the, the little magnet in there won't spin that fast it's got such a high gear down so what will happen is the absolute positioning, uh, apparently the controller rounds the numbers a little bit if they're really big, like long decimal after the decimal numbers, um, floating numbers. And that's going to cause an issue because after a couple hundred rotations, it might be off a half a degree. And so you'd have to theoretically home it or uh, unwind it so that it's keeping its absolute positioning. So these are some things that we're going to have to figure out. But ultimately, proof of concept is success. All right, wonderful lighting in here again, but uh, whatever, I don't really care that much because this is just a demonstration video of what I've been trying to achieve here. There are a lot of things to fix. There's a lot of improvement to be made. And ultimately, we'd probably have to write our own little G-code generating program so we don't have to try to edit the script. One of the reasons I wanted to just take already made G-code and be able to edit that uh, through a script and pop in the U values or V values eventually, oh, this will be the V axis. Um, the reason we wanted to do that is because really you can make a vinyl cutter out of this or any other sort of knife cutter. Or a, uh, I mean there's just lots of options here to play with and so having that extra access and figuring that out is good but allowing you to make it with other G-code generators and just add in, add in the extra command through a script seemed like a great idea um, otherwise you know we're gonna have to figure out a whole other platform it's a lot of different work and it'll be specific for like winding quails or it'll be specific for cutting vinyl or something like that but yeah proof of concept it works it does what I want now it's a matter of tuning and fine detailing and trust me that's going to take a while so I have no idea when the next update will be but when we get there I'll show you how I did the software might make a video on software only if you guys want to see that but it'll be after I rebuild this and that'll be in a later video so video is pretty long by now hopefully you enjoyed the engineering aspect of this and kind of what I went through in order to get to the goal that I ultimately wanted to achieve and finally getting there and realizing I gotta redo it anyway but the the way I've got it set up to move between the gears that pro that part is great now it's just a matter of getting a stepper motor driver to do what I want specifically which means getting a different stepper motor because I can't run it fast enough so when we put a U command on an individual line it kinda like just jerks like this as it goes around to each point and that's not good but if the access moved access the axis moved very fast, the rotational axis, if it moved real fast it would be more fluent. And I'm actually limiting my speed factor because I can only spin this at a certain rate which does not go very fast. So I'd like it to run a lot faster than that. Anyway, let me know what you guys think down in the comments. If you guys are liking this series, I'm trying to make this thing do what I want and uh, 
Yeah, thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever you are. I don't know, it doesn't matter to me, just pick one. But hey, God bless, peace and love, read the Bible more, and as always, love everyone around you. At the end of the day, it's all about people. Things and stuff will all crash and burn, but people's souls will live on. Love you guys. Bye-bye.